Hey guys, I have an idea for a horror game. Okay, what if there is a thing that's for kids, but we make it scary? Also have it set in the 70s or late 80s? Also, kids could die by these monsters or something, and we could give it a quirky sense of humor. It should also be jam-packed with bright and easily marketable characters. Wow, what a very original and cool idea. Hello, neighbors. What's poppin', playtimers? What's bending, you silly ink machines? What's rainbowing, friends? All right, that's enough with this bit. All right, I found something that perplexes me. Something that has shook me to my very core. You know those quirky little horror titles with bright colors and not scary characters? Yeah. And they do that thing where it feels like it's only in it for the money and no passion. Okay. Anyway, what I found in my YouTube recommendation has shattered my brain and my purpose in life. I am questioning what is real and what is hallucination. Anyway, without any more lollygagging, what is this? Garden of Bandan? So when I first saw a playthrough of this game, I thought it was satirical. I thought this was a funny... This game feels like everything you would see in a parody of a horror game. It feels like a group of aliens went to Earth, played Poppy Playtime and Rainbow Friends, and thought this is what all horror games were supposed to be. This game is worse than Rainbow Friends. Rainbow Friends is in its own tier of awful. Not convinced? Read this sentence with a straight face and tell me that you find this scary. So Garden of Banban Ban is the new cool horror game in town that you will most definitely see in every single YouTube kids animation and awful mobile game ad. By the way, if you're confused by what the title even means, I was too. Garden? It's not even spelled like garden. I mean, this is a kindergarten. Oh, oh. It's set in a kindergarten. So instead of kindergarten, it's garden. Why? This has to be a parody. I swear, there is no way this isn't. How did someone make this character and think, yep, this is scary and intimidating? Even Poppy Playtime had at least one scary character. Anyways, let's look at the premise. You're a parent looking for your kid at a daycare, so you go in when it's closed. And wacky hijinks ensue because, oh no, the mascots are alive at night. I have never seen this done before. Anyway, that concludes the summary. I also like the part where he says it's gardening time, and then he band bands all over those guys. Okay, so let's look at the character roster here. These remind me of the Bliblies in Smiling Friends. It's like they went to MS Paint and then converted them to 3D. But so far, we haven't seen these little gremlins in action. Hey! It's like Poppy played him, where char characters and you don't see them until they'll show up in the next chapter. Did I mention this is a chapter release game? So how about the characters that aren't Rainbow Friends rejects? Okay, so we got a bird and jellyfish. Though only two out of six of these characters are in this chapter, one is a blob and the other is a... Huh? This is a creature, um, this creature is a... Um, well, hmm... We're not gonna worry about this, but we're gonna worry about it later. Hey, you guys are watching Bird Up, the worst show on television. <laughs> but in short, these feel like anti-character designs. So simple and non-unique, each character meshes with the rest. They all look like those inflatable dancing guys you'd see outside of 
car dealerships and car washes. Hey, hey, stop. I'm about to show footage of the game, but it's from YouTube. The person who made it is named BabyZone on YouTube. I will link the video in the description. So the gameplay is very riveting. The game is only 14 minutes. By the way, the opening menu, there is a merch store option. And as of writing the script, it has only been out for a day. It just proves that the game was only made for a quick cash grab, a shameless attempt to being the next Poppy Playtime. And Rainbow Friends. It's all funnier because these games are what I used to make as a comparison for bad horror games. Anyway, the primary mechanic is a drone that flies around and presses buttons. But the game just has you press the buttons and nothing else. No creative usage of this mechanic. You just press this cartoon villain detonator looking thing. Wait a second. You know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Anyway, then it has you wait for a very, 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 very long time for the drone to press the button. This isn't how you make a game. What is this? I sure hope the game builds up atmosphere. No, it doesn't. It's just bland, generic shading. No atmosphere, just this stupid dream core wannabe place. So the first actual gameplay segment is where you grab eggs around the playset and feed it to this high chicken. Like, seriously, this looks like one of those screaming chickens, but purple, and it looks like it just smoked weed like it was April 20th or something. Did I mention that this creature's name is Opila? When making a horror antagonist, you want it to have an oppressive and dominant presence that makes you feel like you're in way over your head. This game is the antichrist of horror games. There is no way in hell someone sat down, made this design, and called it a day. So anyway, you move on and enter this room with this huge gap in the middle of it. So you have to ride a tram that's painfully slow, so you go and then you do a puzzle of the colors of the characters, and then you see a spooky note, which reads, I alone, I want to play with the whole bird. Everyone have party without me. Miss Mason see me, but go, oh, I am scared because hole is loud and my friends scream in it, but bird is funny. That was a great impersonation of the average Gardic phone of Bon Bon fan. But wait, the scary chase ensues where Opila is getting closer on a very slow tram and awkwardly stares at you. When the dodo bird against all odds lands, they sluggishly waddle over, so you do the awful drone mechanic to push a button to get out. I guess they were trying to build up suspense, but it isn't effective because one, the bird looks ridiculous, two, it just awkwardly stares at you. Three, oh my god, I want to finish this video. I am going to scream. So then the actual chase happens and music builds up, but it's not stressful because the jump scare is just the thing squawking at you. You make it to the end and press a button, then the bird trips and freaking dies. We lost a real one today, gang. Bird up. Anywho, you go down this lift, which leads to an abyss, but uh-oh, this green inbred rainbow, friends. Wannabe is grabbing onto your lift, and then you fall, and the eight chapter ends. Wow's a cow a bummer, dude. Anyway, this game is Penguin Bedonky Donk. Do I need to go over the points that I've already gone over already? 
it would be a waste of time. That's what this game is, a waste of time. Indie games are becoming more corporate, and the bad news is that it's only getting worse, and there is no good news. But that doesn't matter in the end, because we still have small passion projects. People who create because they want to add something to this world, not something to their wallet. Either way, it's hilarious to dunk on this game. Well, I'll see you on the other side of the sewer. This video is very rushed. Bye!